Hello, for those of you that don't know, I myself founded Worldwide Cyclery just over 12 years ago when I was 21 years old. And throughout the years, I've been making these Ask Jeff Anything videos where I try to answer all of your questions about our business, the bike industry, mountain bikes themselves, and all of that. I've got some really good ones today that are useful, some that are funny, some that are insightful. And uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. First question. There seems to be a lot of speculation that the bike industry is about to hit hard times since the pandemic bubble has already or is about to burst. Your thoughts or have you heard anything concerning this? Are we about to see big discounts from some brands trying to offload overstocked bikes? This question came in in various different forms by several of you guys and the answer is, yeah, I am kind of concerned. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay I think that the, the bike industry in general, whether it was sort of the lower end bikes under $1,000 or the higher end bikes over $1,000, all of it totally boomed during the sort of, I don't know what you want to call them, peak pandemic years, basically 2020 and 21, a little bit in 2000, early 22. Essentially what happened is more people got into the sport of mountain biking, people who already rode mountain bikes, rode mountain bikes more often and were bored working at home and watched more mountain bike YouTube videos and bought more parts or upgraded their bike and all of that. A lot of the brands and retailers in the bike industry uh, went through the roof, us included, and then a uh, vast majority of them, what it seems like, really over forecasted. They were overly optimistic, thinking that that level of new heightened consumer demand was going to be durable and last for years on end, and it is not. It has plummeted straight back down to basically where it was pre-pandemic. And a lot of the data points that I've been looking at in terms of web traffic, organic search volume for all of the popular terms in the mountain bike world, and looking at all of the web traffic to all your major mountain bike media websites and sort of major mountain bike company websites. Uh, all of it has just plummeted right back down to sort of 2019 levels and uh, sometimes even worse than that. So it's it's not a good situation. A lot of brands and retailers overstocked, uh, got too much over, just over infrastructured as well. And the industry is gonna be in some hard times this year. And I think uh, these questions popped up because there's already been a number of headlines about layoffs in the industry and challenges the industry is gonna face because of all of this. So is it gonna be a hard year? Yes. Uh, however, uh, I'm happy that Worldwide Cyclery ourselves, we're not in a bad situation because we didn't over forecast and we didn't make any major overly optimistic mistakes like that, which I'm really grateful for. Um, this year, we're going to put a lot more effort and emphasis on Kettle and Trail One and obviously just refining every little process we have going in Worldwide Cyclery. So I don't know, Th there's your answer. Yeah, it is gonna be hard. There's gonna be some people discounting out there quite a bit because they have too much inventory. That's gonna be a mess for everyone in the industry, but I don't know. Welcome to the roller coaster of business, baby. That's how it goes. That's the way she goes? That's right, that's the way she goes. That's what I said. Is the $1,000 personal delivery option for real? How many times have you actually done it? So when you check out on Worldwide Cyclery or on the Kettle website, there is a shipping option for hand delivery by Jeff for $1,000. And yes, I have done it a few times. Uh, the best one I've ever done was in Rochester, New York. Uh, it included a mariachi band. Here, just watch the video I made of it right here. Two months ago, I thought it would be funny to put a shipping option on the website for $1,000, hand delivery by Jeff. I did not think anyone would ever buy it, but now I'm at the airport with a box full of mountain bike parts. I wasn't quite sure how to surprise and delight this customer since he paid $1,000, but luckily Jared gave me the idea of hiring a local mariachi band to surprise him. Does pedal kickback actually affect everyday riding? The answer to that is, like most things in the bike world, it depends. So it depends if your bike has a lot of chain growth in the suspension and how much suspension travel you have, and kind of also how cognizant you are to even noticing that. Some people probably don't notice. One of the best tests to figure that out is go to downhill you've ridden 100 times and take your chain off. I do what? And uh, zip tie your derailleur so it doesn't make a bunch of noise, or take your derailleur off too if you can, and then ride the exact same downhill with no chain and no derailleur and see how your bike feels. 
And if you can actually notice a difference in your suspension with no chain versus having a chain, then yeah, it probably is making a difference for you, your riding style, your awareness, and your bike. O-Chain is a really cool, interesting product that's trying to combat this. Uh, I talked a ton about this with a really, really highly knowledgeable person, Nico Malali, who's a professional downhill racer on episode 91 of the MTB podcast. So if you're really curious about pedal kickback, O-Chain, high pivot suspension, uh, go listen to that podcast. Uh, link below to that podcast and article uh, in the description below. Is Jeff a wiener or is Jeff a giant wiener? Not a bad question. I don't know. Seems like a lot of work to run WC Kettle and Trail One. How do you manage that and why the extra effort with Kettle and Trail One? By the way, love the Kettle gear and recently ordered some T1 grips. Damn good stuff. Uh, yeah, it's quite a bit of effort. I, I think running any business is quite a bit of effort, especially the way we do it, where we actually care and try really hard to operate a really good business. Uh, albeit we are still in what I would like to call the lifestyle industries, uh, making awesome outdoor apparel, selling bike stuff, creating bike components. That's kind of really fun, fulfilling, enjoyable stuff that basically everyone in the company is passionate about and enjoys. And we have a really good balance of fun and focus and making sure we are taking advantage of, you know, enjoying being in these great industries while still running and operating really impressive businesses that actually bring value to the world and make products and bring services that people care about and do a good job and compete really well. So yeah, it's a lot of work, but I don't know, it's a, it's a great career and, and, and I enjoy it. So. I'm gonna keep at it. And why the extra effort with Kettle and Trail One? Yes, WC is, is a good business that does great. Uh, however, WC has some inherent flaws. It's a, it's a predominant retailer, meaning everything that WC sells predominantly is from other brands where we don't really control what they make, the margin they give us, their marketing policies, their innovation, any of that. So kind of the natural pro progress of any retailer is to eventually start uh, owning its own brands. That's what we did with Kettle. We own outright Trail One. We uh, helped co and have an equity stake in. So yeah, those are two brands that we have um, kind of just a, an ownership stake in as opposed to just retailing other brands' products. So different business model, a little bit more capital intensive, but a little bit more valuable in the long run once they hit scale. So I don't know, business nerd stuff you could say. Nerd alert! Where do you think future mountain bikes will look in terms of geometry, hidden shocks, or even more access stuff? Um... I don't think they'll be that much different, to be honest. I think that bikes have kind of hit a bit of an innovation plateau. I don't think we're gonna see a lot of huge changes to geometry or really very many things at all on your sort of modern day high-end premium level mountain bike. I think there'll be little tiny refinements, kind of like you mentioned, uh, cool things, hidden shocks, uh, electronic stuff, access. I don't know, they're pretty tapped out. It's, it's pretty hard to imagine where else they're gonna go. I'm kind of hoping that they'll go the route of uh, a little bit more reliability, less needing service, uh, same level of premium performance, but a lower price point and less weight, more sustainable manufacturing processes. Those are like kind of all the little refinements that I think the bike industry will see in the next 10 years or so. I don't think there's gonna be any major changes. And when I say major changes, I mean, think of a bike in 2010 versus a bike now. Those are pretty major changes. I don't think there'll be that many major changes, but I think it'll be a lot of small refinements, kind of like what you're seeing with the, you know, iPhone 10 to iPhone 14. Refinements, small stuff. Are light e-bikes marketing? Why are they so expensive if power units are not the full ones? Uh, the cost of an e-bike, I think when you when you look at a lightweight e-bike, right? So something that has a little bit smaller uh, battery and motor versus something with a little bit bigger battery and motor, that's pretty negligible cost difference in the actual size of the battery and size of the motor and everything else is essentially the same. So yeah, they should pretty much be the same price in that sense. And I definitely do not think they're marketing. Uh, I rode plenty of sort of bigger, heavy, let's call it 45 pound plus e-bikes. Um, albeit they're very powerful and the batteries last super long time. They're just pretty heavy and it's just a very, very different experience riding a bike that's over 45 pounds or sometimes even over 50 pounds. Uh, then you hop on a lightweight e-bike like the brand Forestall that we started carrying who's making these amazing custom bikes out of Andorra. Uh, you ride one of those that's 39 pounds and it feels essentially like a normal enduro bike, um, yet you can ride it as fast as you can go for an hour and a half and not drain the whole battery and it's unbelievably fun. And to me, now that's kind of what I'm hooked on. And when I hop on an e-bike, all I really want 
a ride is something that's 39, 40, 41 pounds and not really anything heavier. But e-bikes will be like anything else, right? Some people have a six inch travel bike, some people have a hardtail, some people have a four inch travel bike. E-bikes are gonna be the same thing. Some people are gonna prefer the lightweight ones, some people are gonna prefer a little bit heavier, longer travel, bigger battery, bigger motor ones. Some people are gonna have both of them because they just have that much space in their garage and room in their wallet. Welcome to the bike world. Are bathrooms overrated? Uh, this was asked by one of our staff here in the California store. I'm assuming because as of a couple months ago, I decided I was gonna no longer pee in the bathroom here. If the warehouse door was open, I was just gonna go outside and pee in the bushes. He's peeing on his own. Keep it flowing, that's it. Go, go. Because it seems a lot more logical to just pee in the bushes uh, than waste like a half a gallon of potable water in the toilet. Um, by flushing nothing but urine. So I've just been peeing outside for almost two months now and some of the staff has taken on to it even though I've asked everyone, but other people are just making fun of me and think I'm kind of a weirdo, but nothing new there. Uh, so yeah, that's why. Is electronic suspension going to be a staple in the mountain bike world, just like how electronic shifting took off? I'm gonna say no. Uh, the reason I say no, which I could be wrong, but the reason I say no is because you shift and change gears all the time, you don't always adjust your suspension. So there's obviously a very serious need to shift your bike on every mountain bike ride. Dozens of times, there's not a serious need to adjust your suspension on any given mountain bike ride. So yeah, you gotta shift all the time. You don't need to adjust your suspension all the time. All the, the advantage of all this electronic suspension is sort of its ability to dynamically adjust immediately based off of what it's sensing, whether your bike is climbing, whether your bike's descending, whether it's about to hit a big G out or a jump. Uh, I, I don't know, It's uh, none of that stuff has really taken off in, in a way that's like hit mass market yet. And, and everyone who has ridden it, um, I actually have it myself, but some of our staff has, and they're like, yeah, it's cool. It's like, eh. it's so, I don't know. I, I just don't see it becoming as important as electronic shifting because it's just not as necessary to adjust your suspension. Now. Jeff, is there any way you guys could make more podcasts frequently? Love the podcast. Uh, Got to give the people. We are making the MTV podcast and we are stepping it up for 2023. I promise you, we are making more episodes more consistently. We also brought back the live recordings on the MTV podcast YouTube channel. Um, so if you haven't heard about that podcast, we answer a ton of mountain bike questions. Myself, Jared and Liam uh, go through mountain bike news and mostly just answer mountain bikers questions of all kinds. And it's been a really fun thing to create and pull off. Uh, well, we didn't actually create it. We, we sort of took it over from these two guys who were running it for the first 70 episodes episodes, but now we're over a hundred episodes. So yeah, it's really fun. We're going to put more effort into it in 2023. So if you're not already subscribed, please do wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find it there, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, yada, yada. And for the guy who asked this question, yes, we're trying to make a lot more of those in 2023. I promise you. Trail One t-shirt line, designs featuring trail systems and still donate to said trails. Uh, yes, I would love to do that. That was actually an idea, uh, basically on the roadmap of Trail One. Uh, all the various stuff for Trail One is either donating to the trail network that it's named after or going into the treasury. The treasury then donates to various trail networks that apply or sort of need help that we find. And we have a lot of ideas of how we can scale this, basically give back to trail networks all around the world as Trail One scales and has more sales, more audience, more, just influence and yeah, making rad shirts that have trail networks on them that people can you know buy and then money goes straight, straight to that trail network. Absolutely, uh, we would love to do that. Uh, and Brady, if you would like to come design these shirts for us, that would be awesome, thank you. How could it possibly make any business sense to offer Kettle with a lifetime warranty? Uh, all the stuff at Kettle, we are offering a lifetime warranty and basically are repairing anything that ever gets damaged on the Kettle gear side as well, um, because we just wanna make really good, durable stuff that lasts forever, and we believe in making good, high-quality apparel that lasts a long time. And does it make business sense at the size of Kettle is now? Yes, will it if we get to the size of Patagonia? I don't know, I guess we'll figure out when we get there and <laughs> might have to pull that back in, but I hope not. I, I think the goal is, is we wanna make good stuff that actually lasts a long time. It doesn't promote consumerism, but rather like useful uh, versatility in products that you have less things in your closet that last you longer and do more. Any epic MTB trips this year? Myself asked myself this question and the answer is yes, we have two. Uh, one chasing epic trip in June, 
with it going to Whistler, which is going to be amazing. I'm looking forward to that. I think there's one spot or maybe two spots open on that trip still. Uh, link below. Um, we're also going to do a trip to the Dolomites in Italy in September. Haven't really announced that one because I think it's going to sell out to kind of just friends and family. But uh, yeah, if you're interested, ping us over an email info at worldwidecycler.com and we will tell you about those. But uh, yeah, we're going to put on some, well, not we're going to put them on, but we're going to go on some epic mountain bike trips that qualify people who do mountain bike tours are going to put on this year so yeah and then we're also going to be at Sedona Mountain Bike Festival in March a whole bunch of the staff is going to be there and we're all going to just ride bikes and have fun and uh, also maybe try and record an MTV podcast while we're there and that's it that is all thank you for watching if you've watched this far I appreciate it I love you thank you for your support over the years and being who you are and uh, we will see you guys in the next YouTube video cheerio